Ramstein's songs are heavy, powerful and relentless and in no way could their shows be described as small scale or intimate. They are anthemic and appeal to the mass rather than the individual. Ramstein did do something different. They were different, they sounded different, they presented themselves different. They presented themselves almost as an art project, which in a very vague sense had something to do with music. Metaphors of totalitarianism, brutality and megalomania are often used to describe the band and they seem to fetishise the power and control inherent in music at the turn of the century. The chemistry of them, you know, getting together in a rehearsal room or getting together on stage creates this kind of like really powerful music. Ramstein are deliberately provocative. They see it as artists to say the unspeakable, to explore forbidden themes and to get us to consider our own darkest thoughts, fears and fantasies. And here you have these East Germans, Ramstein, coming over into the Western world and saying, baby, we're going to give it to you and we're going to give it to you guys real good. And they're coming with all this power and this aggressive guitars and heavy metal guitar sound and stuff like that. And their job is actually being done. They've done it. They grabbed you by the balls and you're going into the MTV and saying, look at these guys and you're talking about them. The job is done, folks. The job is done. All were trapped in the political system they'd been brought into. One where the books you could read, the films you could see, and the music you could hear were all strictly controlled. Yet they all had one thing in common, the desire to make music. All six members of Ramstein grew up in what was then the Communist German Democratic Republic. The members of Ramstein had once belonged to bands that were part of a semi-legal underground network of shadowy rehearsal rooms, one-off squat venues and badly recorded cassette albums. Vocalist Till Lindemann, born in Leipzig in 1963, started drumming in the band First Arsch in the North German town Schwerin before he gravitated towards Berlin. Paul Landers, born in Berlin in 1964, was in the band Die Firma, with drummer Christoph Schneider, born the same year. Richard Kruisper, meanwhile, was playing in a group called Orgasm Death Gimmick and came from Schwerin. Flaka Lorenz's experience was typical of the group. Every night when he finished work, he would go straight to rehearse with his band, Feeling B, where he played alongside Paul Landers. The youngest, bass player Oliver Riedel, also came from Schwerin, and before taking his place in Ramstein, performed in the famous East German band, the Inchertoctables. In 1992, Flaker and Paul remained in Feeling B, while Schneider moved on to join Richard, Till and Ollie. Ollie had been in the successful band The Intertoctables and friends were amazed that he'd given up playing to crowds of thousands to joining an unknown band. Robert Beckman was with Ollie in The Intertoctables at the time. Ollie came to the band and uh, he said from the first day on, I will stay only one year. I like your music, but it's not a kind of style I want to play. So we said, okay, no problem. Uh, we wanted to, to hold him in the band, of course, because he was a good bass player, he was a good friend, he was a good buddy, and so we wanted to hold him, but he said, no, not my stuff, I want to play in a band which is doing harder music. After that, I don't know, some months later, Rammstein was founded, and uh, that's uh, the music he likes and he's feeling good with. And so he left the band after, I think, 14 or 15 months. However, it wasn't long before the four got noticed when they won a Berlin competition for inexperienced bands. Shortly, the fifth to join was Paul, who was persuaded to be the front man and do vocals. And then soon after, Flaka joined the ranks. By the end of 1992, the band had finally formed and began rehearsing together. In 1995, they completed their first demo. Emu, their manager, set up their first record deal, which they recorded at Stockholm's Polar Studio with Swedish producer Jacob Hellner. 
Aditya Sharma from Berlin's Fritz Radio was attributed to breaking the band by playing their music in high rotation on one of Germany's major radio stations. When I first heard of Rammstein, it must have been uh, in the spring of 1995 where a colleague of mine uh, who knew the band personally gave me a dat of these friends of his who played in a band called Rammstein and they had played their first gigs and this dat was supposed to be um, on their first album. And uh, my first reaction was that it was a very odd band name because it's almost quite ugly to call yourself after such a macabre incident where two planes crash together, land in an audience and about 80 people die. But the sound on the DAT was very different. It was neo-industrial. It was definitely something that popped out. And the whole aura of the band certainly sprung out because I had heard from Jens about the few live performances they had given. And I thought to myself, they're definitely not like the other bands. I remember playing the first song of the first album in August of 1995 on the show. And I got a few phone calls straight after that by listeners who wanted to know what the band was. And I don't want to blow my own trumpet here, but one of the, I remember that the first thing I said about Rammstein on air was that this was programmed to be controversial from the start, and that's exactly how it came. Their first single was Do Reet So Good, You Smell So Good, released in 1995 on Motor Music. The single was enough of a success for Motor to release Rammstein's first album, Hurt So Light, Heartache. Rene Otto, a rock journalist, has regularly interviewed and written about the band. Their first album, Herzelite, includes several really good songs. In the beginning, Wollt ihr das Bett in Flammen sehen? Then uh, Seemann was a, a very impressive ballad. And the last song, Rammstein uh, itself, is a really good end for a record. I can say that there's no song on this album which is on a low level of songwriting. There are elements of true German music in it. Um, the straight music sounds very German without a, con a connection to the, the old uh, Germany before uh, um, 45. Nobody was interested in the album when it first came out. It's a remarkable story because the album came out and only through word of mouth did people actually discover that this band existed at all. In fact, I would imagine that it holds certain records because I think it only entered the German charts about seven months after it was released. Nobody wanted to have anything to do with this band initially. And when it came out, it was this very tight, staccato, industrial metal, riff-oriented style of music that many German bands actually didn't have the guts to produce because there was this very Germanness to the whole thing. You know, they were on the cover with no shirts on. There was this very manly undertone and also with the style of singing that Till actually goes after. Uh, there was so much room for controversy and so much room almost for Germans to pick up on certain aspects of their history that they actually hadn't, you know, gone through in a certain way. I know that they were keen to create a certain heaviness that had nothing to do with speed, but had to do with riffs and emotions almost. And it worked because their lyrics are quite deep, although many people don't think they are. Uh, they often talk about things at a very surface level, but if you take the album as a whole, or if you actually, as a listener, take the time to fantasize about certain aspects of what they're singing about, you can actually get quite a kick out of it. And it's not only the slightly erotic, gothic images that they you know, conjure up. I think it's the concept as a whole. Herzelite is a fusion of heavy metal guitars, industrial rhythms, with Lindemann's harsh, unsettling lyrics, and Oliver Riedel's elastic Euro disco bass playing. Alex Rudzinski is a friend of the band and a great fan of their music. From the album uh, Hertzlide, I heard this song called uh, Du Ries So Good. That means in English, you smell real good. And uh, because of the powerful guitar chords and the aggression behind the music, just totally blew me away, being that I'm a guitar player myself. And I said, wow, what's this? And I just had to turn the radio louder. 
In Germany, Herzlite was a runaway success and its reputation soon spread across Europe. Ramstein were about to become bigger than they could have ever dreamt. With stomping beats and monotonous riffs, some of Ramstein's music influences and style could be rooted in Flarker, Paul and Schneider's time in the band Feeling B. Something reflected by the current lead of Feeling B, Alexander Goldman. Da sind sehr sehr viele Ähnlichkeiten. Also bei Ramstein diese ganzen Melodien alles, das war bei Feeling B das A und O. Also die Melodieführung der Keyboards, die Gitarre, alles. Also von Feeling B wurden sehr viele Konzepte übernommen. Also sehr sehr viele. Also man gibt gibt Feeling B Lieder von damals, die klingen eigentlich schon wie Ramstein. Auf ihrer dritten CD Feeling B gibt's ein zwei Titel, das ist eigentlich Ramstein. Also sie haben da sehr viel übernommen, also mit mit eingebracht in die Ramstein Geschichte. I would describe Rammstein's music as a blend of many, many different elements of the music spectrum. It's a bit of gothic, it's gothic rock, it's industrial, it's very riff-oriented. It's also very German, for sure. It's identity, it's German identity, and I think that's the main reason why it worked in Germany so quickly. And Till's rolling R's, his deep voice, the fire, the controversy, the artwork, all this kind of mixed in and blended in to create something unique. One of Ramstein's earlier show promoters in Schwerin was Simone Heinrich. Das ist schwer zu sagen, finde ich. Ich würde das immer so als Düsterrock kann man das auch nicht. Bisschen härter, auf alle Fälle kein Pop. <lacht> Rock, aber Hardrock. Das ist, finde ich, sogar fast eine eigene Musikrichtung. Also was, für mich ist es zumindest was Einmaliges. Es ist sowieso schwer, manche nicht nur auf Rammstein jetzt gemünzt, sondern auf viele Musiker diese Musikrichtung immer so in Schubladen zu stecken. Weil in vielen, auch bei vielen, die nicht so hoch kommen, weil es eben was Eigenes ist, weil sie das damit nichts anfangen können, gerne, weil sie das nicht in die Schublade stecken, die haben das eigentlich sehr schwer. Und deswegen freut mich das für Rammstein. Besonders toll, dass das so gut geklappt hat. Ramstein's music is one that creates a commotion, but at the same time they wanted to create music that was danceable and tread heavily. Andreas Vater, a good friend of Paul Landers, has appreciated the group's music and style over the years. Ja, ich mag die Musik. Ich mag sowieso harte Musik und ähm, ja, sie verkörpern natürlich etwas, äh, was gerade hier in, in gerade in Ostdeutschland viel Identifikation birgt, weil sie eben aus dem Nichts, aus äh, ohne ohne äh, gefördert zu werden von irgendjemandem oder oder äh, groß äh, ohne dass Geld hineingepumpt wurde von irgendjemandem, sich selber einen sehr großen Erfolg aufgebaut haben, der relativ selten ist für, für die Seite. Ramstein's success has been recorded throughout their years by a good friend of the band and internationally renowned photographer Olaf Heine. The music is metal music, rock music, strong rock music, hard and loud rock music but with a, with an electronic edge to it um, but it also it's also pop music at the same time if you strip down the music I think if you strip down the music to just an acoustic guitar they're really really good pop songs it's not just noise you know it's not just like these strong beats and and the the heavy guitars if you, if you strip it down like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, etc. It's, they're really, really good pop songs, you know? I mean, a song like Engel, for instance, I mean, I saw people like, just like, you know, singing along, like, like a children's choir at the concerts. I mean, I think that's what makes their music so, so great. Ramstein's records are only half the story of their success 
and can only be fully appreciated when seen playing live. And their main tool in achieving this was with the use of fire. Simone Heinrich remembers one of the first times Till executes the band's spectacular blazing effects. Die, die Performance von Rammstein, die fand ich richtig beeindruckend. Und ich wusste vorher auch nicht, dass Till irgendwie bei der Feuerwehr gearbeitet hatte. Und ja, das war, hatte ich auch keinem weiter großartig erzählt, so dass die Ordner, die ich da vorne hingestellt hatte an die Bühne, sich auch erschrocken haben mit dem Feuer und denen ganz heiß wurde. Aber das war, alle waren begeistert und ich auch. Ich habe mich extra gestellt auf so einem Tisch, weil ich auch die ganze Verantwortung hatte und wollte, dass wenigstens alles gesehen haben, falls doch irgendwas passiert. Ja, und das war schon richtig toll. Also mit dieser ganzen Pyroshow und wie die sich da so bewegt haben, das war schon, wie ich schon sagte, sehr beeindruckend <lacht> für mich, Rammstein. Für mich ist 80 Prozent eigentlich die Musik und 20 Prozent die Show und das vergessen viele Leute. Aber ich weiß, dass Feuer eben auch ein Element ist, was, was unheimlich anzieht. Insofern funktioniert es natürlich auch so in den Medien. In 1996 uh, Rammstein played a show in the Waschhaus, which is a small venue in Potsdam, just outside of Berlin. In fact, the two venues that they played quite often was the Waschhaus in Potsdam and the Knark Club in Berlin. And what usually used to happen is that Till used to stand on stage and he'd actually lift this flame and then the show would begin. But at one incident in 1996, he actually didn't raise the flame, he actually put it to the ground. And what happened was, when all the people who came to the show, when they entered the venue, they discovered that there was this smell of kerosene in the, in the air. And what they'd done is that they had actually spilled kerosene all over the floor and he had torched the floor. So when the show began for about two seconds, the whole venue was on fire and everybody was awake instantly. And when that happened, people really knew who Rammstein was because this story quickly circulated all over Berlin. They'd never repeated that in that way, but they were always particular to actually develop the whole pyromantic idea. Beispiel durfte man in Chicago überhaupt kein Feuer machen und das war ganz genau so okay. Also das war für uns auch mal ein Test wieder völlig ohne Effekt zu spielen und äh, wir haben gemerkt, dass die Leute genauso abgehen wie mit Büroschuh. Äh, a Ramstein concert is an experience comprised of music, theater, pyrotechnics and lighting and is experienced by people from all classes and ages. It unites and divides its audiences while still provoking the system and remaining one of the most controversial and subversive world bands. If you look at the live DVD at, the, at this Berlin show, um, it's just beautiful, I think. You know, it's, it's a very theatrical opera kind of, of um, 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 stage, show, stage show and um, I was doing pictures at that show for like two days and I was running around and at some point I felt like a, I felt like a war photographer <laughs> with all this fire around me and um, I got close to being burned a few times like when like the first time I shot Rammstein live I mean I've seen them before I, kn I knew that they used the, the, the flamethrower and all those like pyrotechnics but like being kind of na naive I just went like really close to the band and I just I got really close to being burned at that time. That's the thing that uh, is pretty much amazing about the Ramstein concerts you know the uh, uh, the public itself you see yuppies as well as your hardcore heavy metal people with their long hair and moshing away at the front of the stage with their leather bands and spikes and stuff like that. So the mixture between the public uh, and, and the people that went to their concerts was quite not understandable. It's like, how do you get all these different types of uh, scenes involved to something like that? And, uh, it was quite amusing because you got your guys as well as wearing your Ralph Lauren polo shirts going over to wearing their leather uh, vests and, and whatever you want to call it, uh, military boots or Doc Martens or whatever it was. It was quite amusing because it's tried to try uh, and understand is that how this type of music actually combines these totally two different worlds or, or completely different worlds all together into one 
uh, one area just coming to listening to this type of music. Ja, die Live-Shows waren sicher ein Grund, warum Rammstein so schnell so viel Beachtung gefunden hat. Also am Anfang wurde auch, ich würde mal sagen, gegen jegliche Regeln mit äh, sehr extrem, mit viel Feuer und Pyrotechnik gearbeitet, auch mit sehr martialischen Metallfiguren und großen, äh, 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 auch für damalige Verhältnisse schon sehr, sehr bedeutenden Lichteffekten, fand ich. Und ähm, sicherlich ist äh, äh, Show in dieser Form ein, ein wichtiger Aspekt, wenn man äh, zu solchem Erfolg kommen will. Oder es äh, ist sehr hilfreich, würde ich mal sagen, um, um äh, so einen Erfolg aufzubauen. If you look at their shows today, for example, they did a huge show in Berlin in 2001. And uh, they, they've actually been very particular to, to take technology to its max and ensure that when the band plays live that they actually get something that they would not normally expect. It's a, something that every band actually tries to sell its audience, but I think Rammstein actually managed that they do something which is completely different to the tour that took place before. And the huge controversy again on that front is a safety issue. Because I remember in 2001 they played in the arena in Berlin, which is a huge venue where about eight to 10,000 people sometimes can be fit in. And one of the steel plates that were above the stage, they actually, it actually fell down and it hurt some of the audience members who had to be transported off into hospital. And the huge discussion back then was how safe are concerts that actually have so much fire. And the band and the crew and the whole management are very, very particular to say that it is completely safe. But you hear about accidents, especially in America recently, where many hundred people died, that it is a very tricky affair. But I think that's also, again, a part of Rammstein and the aura and the mystique that comes along with this band. None of Ramstein were ready for the transformation into rock stars, and they had never expected to be so commercially successful. The band uh, themselves, there's no real leader, and there's really no uh, person that actually is the front man. Okay, of course you look at the band and everybody talks about Till Linderman. He's the guy that's standing in the front, he's the one that's doing all the power up front, and you get the ba band in the background. But uh, after meeting them personally, um, you see that when they go to do their interviews, they're actually, well, I'm really not into it today. How about you, Paul? You, you're into doing this? Or Richard, you want to talk to the guys today? So it's, actually, it's, a, it's a quite equal status in the band. There's no real leader and there's no real minority in the band. Ramstein, however, were not fame-struck teenagers. They had their feet firmly on the ground. They cultivated normal, stable family lives and worked hard on their sound and musical talents. Paul's guitar play is very unique. And uh, that comes from feeling big, because he's a very fast player and uh, he doesn't like any solos, any bigger solos. He's a very straight ahead guitar player. The other people, Paul, Paul ist, glaube ich, der, den ich am längsten kenne und Schlag nebenbei auch. Ähm, Paul ist der Antreiber in der Band so ein bisschen. Eigentlich beide Gitarristen, Richard auch, wenngleich die auch ein bisschen unterschiedlich vorgehen. Paul geht diffiziler vor und, und versucht immer alle zusammenzutreiben und, und äh, irgendwas vorwärts zu bringen, wogegen Richard sehr gezielt an der Musik arbeitet. Ich glaube oft auch wahrscheinlich sehr äh, abgekapselt für sich selber. Paul ist der Typ mit den Ideen und der Typ, der es schafft, sie real real on on a very on very um, unconventional ways. 
you know. So there's nothing, uh, he would never say it does not work. He's thinking over how it will work. You know, that's, I think, his character. Yeah. I would say that Till Lindemann, uh, as a singer, he kind of stands out immediately. He's a quiet fellow, privately. He has this deep voice. He has a very manly figure. He used to be a professional swimmer. He has a good figure. And he can basically, he can control things. He's also, there's something very mystical about him. Nobody really can grasp him. And I think he's quite particular about that as well. I remember the first time he came, he came up with this big book, uh, like this big old medicine book with all these pictures and drawings of like illnesses and like sick people. And it was really disgusting actually. But um, we ended up copying some of the, like the wounds and, and, and scars and stuff and just uh, had a makeup artist do that on their faces. So um, that's how some of the ideas like how they approach me. Also Till, Till ist der, der ähm, der Band natürlich die Prägung gibt durch sein Auftreten, durch, sein, durch seine Erscheinung auch schon. Und äh, ich glaube, der war die erste Wahl für einen Sänger in so einer Band, weil er eben so eine, so eine Ausstrahlung hat und so eine Statur und so ein Auftreten. Und er ist ähm, auch menschlich ist er ein sehr, sehr warmherziger und guter Typ, also ein guter Freund, den man sich sehr verlassen kann, muss man mal sagen. Richard ist ein Gitarrist, er ist ein guter looking fellow, stands on stage. Er ist quite talkative, er ist nice, er spielt Gitarre sehr gut. Well. Er ist verantwortlich basically für alle Riffs. Ich denke, er ist ein sehr nice guy, den man mit jedem Zeit sprechen könnte. Richard ist ein wirklich kreativer Typ. Too. You know, others like Paul, for instance, I would say he concentrates much more on the music. Richard does too, but Richard also has a very strong visual um, idea about the band. Yeah, of course, I know, I think I know Ollie best, because I, I played together with him, I think 14 or 15 months, and he's a very quiet guy, a very uh, introverted. Well, Ollie, the best bass player for instance, is a very, very quiet guy. He's very interested in photography. I, I remember I went, when, one time when we were in San Francisco, I went with him to get him a camera. He was, he's very interested in that. But then, on the other hand, he's a very quiet, very shy guy. Olli is a very calm guy. Olli I know ja durch the year where we together sind. Ist He's actually a very calm and, and very zurückhaltend guy. Flake is one personality, he plays the keyboards. He's known for one-liners. He is very cynical almost. If you ever interview him, he's got nothing good to say about anything. He has nothing, I mean, that's not making him bad. He's a funny guy. He can even say bad things about the bands that uh, he tours with. And he also says some really fun stories about what goes on behind the scenes, which actually nobody really ever finds out. He has, you know, it's a no bars kind of thing. Whatever he thinks, he says it. I like that kind of person. Flack is a guy with a very special humor. When he starts talking, if he talks, what is not every day, but uh, if he's good on, he starts talking very weird and funny stories. You don't know what you can believe him and what not. It's very hard to make a difference. And so, uh, lots of people, who doesn't believe nothing when Flack is opening his mouth. Chris, that's his uh, image, yeah? What he uh, was working on very hard for a couple of years. <laughs> Flack is the funny guy, he's the weirdo in that band. Um, and the band needs him because the band is, otherwise would be a bit too serious, I think, so they need a guy like Flack as well. Christoph the drummer, like the others too, very hard working guy. And he is more serious, I think. He's, he has not no humor, but he's a little bit more straight and a little bit more serious, I think, than the, uh, than the others. Schneider is the drum machine, he is the Arbeiter, he is tagelang am Computer sits, programmiert, macht. So can man characterize him, I think. Schneider on drums, also a very quiet guy. He's the one who actually stands out and does many of the interviews. But all of them, just regular guys, nice people. And you could even imagine, despite all the menacing, ominous, gloomy connotations to Rammstein, 
they could be your friends. On their second album, Zen Zoot, released in 1997, Ramstein continued to work in the same disciplined way as before, utilizing strict rules and structures in the construction of each song. The second uh, album from Ramstein is called Zehnsucht. Uh, translated into English, that would be, I really don't know if there's an actual word in English for it, but um, it would mean everything from being homesick, missing your girlfriend, just being away from where, you're, where you grew up or where your home is, and uh, just missing everything about it. Uh, the best song they ever wrote, I think, is Du Hast. Um, I think even in, in America, there were uh, high chart positions, and um, yeah, it's I think that the top of their their songwriting because um, they had very hard guitars on in this song, and it was very catchy. There was a melody you, you could imagine after some seconds, and the riffing of the guitar was very very good. So I think it's their best song. One of their big hits from that album was uh, Angel. And uh, the interesting words about Angel uh, is that he's singing about seeing an angel that's coming down from heaven and trying to show him the uh, way about going and preceding his life. And him explaining that to this day, to, to, to go about and, and live in this world, that you actually don't have to be an angel anymore because of the corruption, because of the, the, just all the bullshit that's going on in, in this world today, whether it be the, the taxes and the governments, the way they're responding on the, on the, the minority groups and stuff like that. Um, that's basically the, the, if you read between the lines, where the point that they're trying to get at in their, in, in their song, Angel. To date, Zen Zucht stands as the definitive Ramstein record, which lyrically touches again on many of the taboo subjects, as on their previous album, Hurts a Light, of sexual perversion, pain and violence. I think they make a lot of effort about uh, what the lyrics will be like, and Till's responsible for most of these as well, and he does uh, have a capacity to fantasize in a certain way that is quite appealing. It is very macabre sometimes. It could be gloomy, it could be, as I said, ominous and even negative to a certain extent. But I think you have a certain kind of person who would find that kind of text and that kind of outlook on the world quite appealing. It's never negative. It's also very personal, it has to be said. Eindeutig sind, so man kann sie eigentlich verstehen, wie man will. Wenn man natürlich schlecht drauf ist, versteht man sie schlecht. Man kann aber auch viele gute Sachen daraus ziehen. Also von daher finde ich das immer eine Interpretationssache, wie manche sich so aufgeregt haben. Aber ich habe mich da nie drüber aufregen können. Ich fand es einfach immer nur gut. Manche Ausdrücke mag ich nicht, aber ansonsten finde ich das einfach top. Vor allem die Ideen zu haben und dann dieses düstere und dieser schüchterne Till, wie der da so eine Ausstrahlung mit mir hat, also so eine starke. Wie überzeugend der auf der Bühne wirkt und auch die anderen Musiker, davon bin ich schon stark begeistert. Jeder, der, der in Deutschland irgendwas mit Rammstein zu tun hatte, irgendwie gerade viele Record, bei der Record Company oder so, gesagt hat, dass sie es nicht schaffen können, also gerade mit der deutschen Sprache irgendwie Erfolg zu bekommen. Und es ging so weit, dass sie gesagt haben: Okay, mach doch mal zwei Lieder jetzt irgendwie in Englisch. Wir haben zwei Singles in Englisch zum Beispiel hier veröffentlicht. Und und es ist genau andersrum beziert. Die DJs haben halt nur die deutsche Version gespielt und haben einfach gemerkt und haben gemerkt, dass man nicht einfach eine Sprache auswechseln kann. Das ist einfach zusammengehört, Musik und Sprache. I'm not sure whether the English translations of Rammstein lyrics work. I can't imagine Rammstein to be English. They can't themselves, by the way. They often say in their interviews, we're a German band. Why should we ever try and, you know, emulate other bands? We're from here. That's why we sing in German. Why should we ever sing a song in English if we're German? It was very fresh and very new because nobody ever played that kind of hard 
guitar, electronic music with German lyrics actually. Because most of the like the rock bands in Germany were singing English at that time. And that's pretty much what you know what I was fascinated by. Ich glaube, die ist sehr wichtig. Also die sind auf alle Fälle sehr bekannt in Deutschland und es gibt ja auch schon Coverbands von Rammstein. Ja. Die sind schon sehr wichtig hier. Und haben wahrscheinlich auf die Musikentwicklung von den jüngeren Bands auf alle Fälle großen Einfluss. The way that Till Linderman goes about singing the lyrics, he's very uh, and uh, uh, this real heavy duty German, which you would probably think that comes out of the 1935 to 1945 era, which was quite amusing, but uh, having nothing to do with what you would think it might have to do with. So unusual is it to hear a band singing in German, and so deeply ingrained is the association between Germany and Nazism that heckles are instantly raised, particularly when the music behind is dark, oppressive, brutal and militaristic. The biggest controversy about Rammstein is actually uh, being that most of the people outside of Germany don't understand what they're singing about. And being that Till Linderman, the singer of uh, Rammstein, presents the German language quite aggressive with the rolling R's and stuff like that, the first thing that tends to happen is that the listener, their first objective is, is that to say, oh, these guys are right wing. It sounds like uh, Adolf Hitler standing at the uh, Olympia Stadium in 1936 and uh, speaking to the German people about the nationalistic party and stuff like that, which is absolutely wrong. Deutschland haben äh, Journalisten oft ein Problem damit, äh, mit, neuen, mit, mit neuen Richtungen. Und wenn du da eine Band gründest, wo die Leute kurze Haare haben, Deutsch singen und sagen wir mal harte Musik machen, sie schnell bei der Hand zu sagen, also das ist, muss eine Nazi-Band sein. Sure, they polarize. They're very aggressive on stage. They speak the language very, very penetrative. But like I said, it's all theatrics. It's all a part of being, getting themselves known. A big part of the problem is that German people um, can't really talk about their past. I think they haven't still dealt with their past. And as, as soon as you hear somebody singing in an old traditional way, in a German way, uh, with a, like a kind of a rolling R, an edgy kind of voice, people always like, oh, that sounds like 1930s, you know? Which is stupid because I think, you know, we had great art, great poets, long time before that. And that's what Till relates to, I think. Uh, in around 1999, I invited them again to the program, but due to a very, very controversial circumstance, and that was that uh, they had recorded a video to a cover version which they'd released as a single. The song was stripped by Depeche Mode. The problem with the video was that they had extracted material from a film director in Germany called Leni Riefenstahl, who was commissioned in the 40s and the 30s to make films for Adolf Hitler, and he did this personally. She's a very controversial director in Germany. In fact, she's still alive. And they used sequences from her film Olympia in this video. The, the stripped video, the Lenny Riefenstahl video, I, I, at first I thought it, it was very much over the top. But then, on the other hand, if you look at Lenny Riefenstahl, she was such an amazing filmmaker and photographer. And I came straight to the point and I said, OK, so how, what is it about the controversy? And I think it would be very good, to a certain extent, to clarify whether you are right wing or right is lean, whether you have right is leanings or not and uh, they were not too happy doing it but they did it they said that we are obviously not right wing we come from a, a left wing background we are all you know worker party people from east germany we're harmless and basically i think they were almost they, they reached that point where they discovered that it was more to their advantage to clarify the situation than to have a situation where more controversy in a negative respect would be, you know, would, would come up anyway. Ja, zu diesen rechtsradikalen Vorwürfen 
Ich sehe das so, die, die Leute stammen aus dem linken Punk-Spektrum. Ich kann mir nicht vorstellen, warum sie einmal, äh, auf einmal umschlagen sollen äh, in, in die Gegenrichtung. Äh, wenn man sich die Texte genau ansieht oder auch die Show genau ansieht, merkt man, dass vieles Karikatur ist, dass vieles Spiegelung ist dessen, was äh, das Leben birgt, gerade hier in Deutschland. Und, ähm, und es ist auch nicht neu, dass gerade solche martialischen Vorhaben wie Rammstein oder wie vorher schon Leibach oder wie auch äh, Manson in Amerika ständig in diese Kritik fallen, weil sie eben sich nah ran begeben an diese, äh, an die, an diese Ausdrucksweisen, äh, die immer mit Rechtsradikalismus in Verbindung gebracht werden. Aber sie sind meiner Meinung nach absolut keine Rechtsradikalen. Das kann ich nicht nachvollziehen und ich denke, dass auch Zumindest einige von ihnen schwere persönliche Probleme damit haben, wie zum Beispiel Flake oder wie äh, äh, Schneider, die also zum Beispiel in ihrem Elternhaus, äh, die ja eher aus einer linken Vergangenheit kommen, äh, Probleme damit haben, weil sie in der Presse so geschleift wurden bezüglich dieser Vorwürfe. Und ich denke, dass auch äh, solche Vorwürfe schnell ausgegraben werden, wenn so Neid oder äh, auch einfach Eifersucht eine Rolle spielt, auch in der Presse oder auch bei anderen Musikern, bei anderen Künstlern. Sie haben auch sehr viele Fürsprecher, auch hier in Deutschland und auch im Ausland. Und ich denke, das ist, äh, wer so etwas behauptet, sollte es sehr genau untersuchen, was er behauptet. Und sollte ihnen die Freiheit zugestehen, äh, ihre Texte so zu machen, dass sie die Realität spiegeln und nicht äh, nur unten Blabla da her singen, die andere ist gut. So, as they continue to insist, Ramstein are not Nazis or even Patriots, but they are intelligent, poetic and subversive and touch on extremely controversial subjects to get a reaction. This goal has definitely been achieved. With Zenzoot achieving platinum status and huge sales across Europe and finding success in America, by 1999 their success was about to increase even more rapidly with their album Muta. Mutter is the most accomplished of the Rammstein albums because I know that uh, many people have said that their lyrics aren't very deep, but this was the first album where I had the impression that you could actually read a lot into them. It had some really nice songs, it came out as a digipack with very nice artwork, uh, and I thought that they, 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 they were keen to project themselves as more than just the gloomy staccato riff, manly German boys. Uh, the cover artwork from Mutter is very strange. I don't like it very much because you can see a dead fetus on the front cover in, uh, from Alhit. And um, I think that's not the way to, to promote an album. Um, it's, they, they provoke uh, in everything they do. I think it's a strategy, but I think that's one step too far away from normal behavior. I don't like it very much. There's an interesting song on this album called Links 234. Rammstein were always cornered to actually say something about all the allegations that they were a neo-Nazi band and they never said anything. And then they said that we would bring out a song on this new album which, we, which would be a clear statement. And it was, because Links 234, uh, the, the lyrics of the song go, uh, Links 234, mein Herz schlägt Links 234, which is a marching attitude. The connotation being, of course, for you know old Nazi marches. But the text is, my heart beats left two three four, left two three four. You could actually say that it was just a little too placative and too easy to to read into. But there were people who actually thought it was a good idea to do this song. I think um, it is not the best album they did. It was okay on a high standard, but I think 
um, there were not so much top hits on it. Of course, the first single, Sonne, was a really good song with a very good um, video. And, but I think there are some songs um, which have not the high level of songwriting anymore. The lyrics on Mutter are brilliant, I think. Till reached like really a peak in, in his writing, I think. Um, for me, I like the dark side of, of his writings. Um, a song like Mutter is, um, is brilliant, like where he describes sort of like genetical, uh, artificial baby, you know, DNA baby that doesn't have a mother and I like that stuff, but I think you can't translate it into English. You have to fully understand German to, to be able to, to get the beauty of his rhymes and his sentences. I just thought that the, the record was going in a direction where you could almost say that Rammstein were becoming artists to a certain extent. And again, I thought that they were placing correctly in my mind emphasis on their projection as an entire entity and not as a band that only was constricted or constrained to songs. That was very important and I think they work hard at this. Regardless of what happens in the future, I'm sure that Rammstein will be particular that it's not only about the songs, it has to be about the complete appearance. Muta is Rammstein's most accomplished and adventurous LP, which puts them as indisputably major players on the world stage. None of them were ready for such success, but they embraced it wholeheartedly. Uh, sie wussten es wirklich nicht, aber ich glaube, es war der einzige Ausweg aus ihrer Lage. Sie haben ja irgendwie alle Frauen verlassen, Kinder, alles. Und es gab für sie eigentlich nur einen Weg, äh, aus ihrer Misere rauszukommen. Und das war der Erfolg. Und also ich kann ja nur von Paul und Flage reden und die ganzen Geschichten, die ich da kenne. Also Paul und Flage sind sehr ehrgeizig und alles. Und äh, also mir, also ich habe das 94 zum ersten Mal gehört und es war mir eigentlich damals schon klar, dass das ein Riesenerfolg wird, weil sie einfach mit einer Professionalität rangehen, die seinesgleichen sucht. Also es ist unglaublich professionell und es ist ihr Leben. Also und das ist wichtig, um Erfolg zu haben, dass man hinter der Sache steht und und an das glaubt, was man will und was man erreichen will. I think the band got was a bit surprised by the like the success and by the size of their success. Um, I think they knew they were pretty good in the beginning and they were thinking like exactly about what kind of music they wanted. They, they knew they, they didn't want to copy anybody, they wanted their own style and they, they worked on it re really hard. So I think they, they were aiming for that success but I think in the long run they were like kind of shocked by their own like success, you know. Ramstein have become a major international success, which none of the band had ever foreseen. It had come down to some luck, brilliant marketing, but mainly it came down to using their mother tongue, the rhythm of marching songs composed with native orderliness and carefully selected lyrics. Auf jeden Fall erstmal das das Deutschtum, dieses typische Deutsche, das sie nach außen gebracht haben. Dann ist es sehr melo melodiöse Musik, eigentlich trotz allem die Refrains, das sind alles Welthits. Dann diese harte Gitarren, alles, das ist alles, das komplette Gesamtpaket ist eigentlich äh, ist, ist einzigartig. Das gab es zu dem Zeitpunkt nicht und äh, es, ist, es gehört einfach zu der Zeit. Also, also es ist schon verdammt geil. It always helps to have controversy if you want to stand out in pop music today, whether the stories are true or not. But Rammstein did do something different. They were different, they sounded different, they presented themselves different. They presented themselves almost as an art project, which in a very vague sense had something to do with music. Music wasn't the whole story. And they understood that as a band, they have to project themselves as a unit. Rammstein had to be in the the, the main focus. Nobody could actually stand out amongst the band. I think the main reason 
except for good marketing, of course. But the main reason why they're success, so successful is because they never tried to copy anybody. I mean, of course, they were influenced by bands, you know, especially, you know, being raised in the east part of Germany and not being able to buy all those CDs. You tried to create your own version of that music, but they were absolutely sure about the uniqueness of in their music that they wanted to reach, you know. So I think that's what fans can relate to in a way. I think they are so successful because they have a music field. I mean, if you look back in the middle of the 90s, it was the time when they were Na, Rockmusik schon fast für tot erklärt wurde oder auch Hardrock äh, fast mehr schon in, in, eine Randmusik war. Und sie haben ein Gebiet belegt mit, ihrem, mit ihrer Show, mit ihrem Auftritt, mit, ihrem, ähm, mit ihren Aussagen auch, mit ihren Texten, die ähm, ziemlich schockiert haben, die ziemlich aufgerüttelt haben und äh, die auch Weiß ich woanders auf der Welt, wie in Amerika, Marilyn Manson oder äh, ich weiß nicht, ob es noch andere Beispiele gibt, vielleicht in England, äh, äh, eine Schockwirkung gehabt haben und dadurch äh, genau zu diesem Zeitpunkt so gefragt waren. Es ist immer schwer zu erläutern, warum äh, irgendetwas zu einem bestimmten Zeitpunkt genau so funktioniert. Aber ich glaube, so war es bei Rammstein. Es war zur richtigen Zeit. While all six members began playing together relatively late in life, there is no reason why they should not still have a long career ahead of them. The band has agreed that they'll keep going until any one of them leaves, at which point it will be over. In order to recruit new fans, they're going to have to stand out in some new way. And believe me, I think they'll be working on this project as well. I don't even think the band knows their future. They're working on, on their new album currently. So I think they, all, they will all like explore individual things, but on the other hand, they will definitely go on recording as a band, I think. Um, in what way the music changes, I don't know. At some point, I, I, like, to, I like to hear um, an electronic record actually. Even though they are a guitar band, but it would be nice to have Rammstein kind of like, for me Rammstein is in, in, the, in the line with like bands like Kraftwerk, for, for instance. And, um, and I know they like electronic music, so it would be nice to hear that, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be another guitar-based album in the near future. What I think is the future of the band. Is. Ich denke, sie werden weitermachen. Sie äh, arbeiten, soweit ich weiß, gerade an der nächsten CD. Und äh, wann die rauskommen wird, weiß man nicht. <lacht> Aber ähm, ich denke, dass auch diese CD wieder gut werden wird, nach dem, was ich bisher gehört habe. Und ähm, es ist immer Es ist schwierig zu umschreiben, aber es ist so, dass äh, man kennt das aus der Geschichte anderer Bands. Es ist meistens so eine, äh, ein Aufstieg gibt, auf den ein, ein Abfall dann folgt. Und äh, ich glaube, die Rammsteiner werden es auch nicht anders machen. Die werden einfach sehen, wann dieser Zeitpunkt kommen wird. Und ich denke, dann werden sie auch aufhören. Aber ich glaube, dieser Zeitpunkt ist noch nicht da. The future of the band would depend on exactly what direction the band decides to take in the future. They were a band that always stood out in some way, and I would hope that they'd be in a position to be able to do this continually, because it would be really sad for Rammstein if they almost became a cartoon of themselves. And I would imagine that the band knows this, and I think that they would need to find any or explore avenues where they don't become a normal household name because they are hugely successful. And the worst thing that could happen to Rammstein as a band because they strike out so much is that if a new record comes out and anybody says, oh no, another Rammstein album. I don't think 
that the music, the musicians as individuals will be able to go about and, and, and continue in a solo career. I think Ramstein is known as a whole and that's the way that they will have to stay. The future of the music, the only thing that I can imagine is that it's going to get more aggressive, it's going to get more theatrical, and it's going to get more controversial so that you're going to sit there and say, I can't believe that they're doing this, and you're still going to buy the albums. As Ramstein's fame grows, so does the controversy that has continually dogged them throughout their careers. Ramstein, however, are deliberately provocative. They see it as their duty as artists to say the unspeakable and to explore forbidden themes. What they are doing is questioning our notion of morality, of right and wrong. Forcing everything out into the open, they force us to make up our own minds about them. <laughs>